The International Amateur Radio Union, an ITUR sector member, had a strong interest in an agenda item at WRC12. Can you tell us about that? In 2007, there was an agenda item that related to the amateur radio service. And since the amateur radio service is a radio service, then uh, we took part in all the studies, in the study groups, all the uh, experiments and reports from 2007 and up to this. So this is actually the, the climax. Here is that point to be decided and, and, and it's agenda point 1.23 that has been our main concern. It is an agenda for a frequency allocation on a quite low frequency. It's just around 500 kilohertz. And the amateur and the amateur service have not had access to that part of the frequency spectrum for, for many, many, many years. It was, um, in, in the early beginning of radio, it was interesting and then commercial interest took it over. And we have not been experimenting in, on those frequencies for many years. So it was interesting for us. It also gives us a, um, a better coverage, so to say, a better propagation over land for a longer distance. So it is in some, dis some parts used for emergency communication when you have to set up something very, very fast and you need quite a distance to cover quite a distance, not just some VHF where you can do uh, some 40, 50 uh, kilometers, but you, you need more than that. For the uninitiated, could you give us an insight into the world of amateur radio? It's about uh, technical experiments. It is about uh, giving people the opportunity to learn um, electronics. Myself started in that and became a professional in, in electronics. So um, it gives me the experience, the hands-on experience, not only the, the, the thing I learn at university. It is also a um, possibility to study propagation and, and the, our different bands, they have very different uh, behavior. So it's really, it's not just to read in a book and say it's like this and this. Next year it's different, next week it's maybe different depending on, on sun. We also try to do some um, useful things for the community, um, perhaps not so much here in Europe, but um, in Africa, in other parts, uh, the amateur is used to improvise, to um, bring their equipment, and that can be used in uh, catastrophic disasters, uh, tsunamis. Um, very often it is the amateur with very simple equipment that I, could be the first one. And then the, the heavier and, and more professional organizations will come in later. How significant do you consider the International Amateur Radio Union's presence has been at WRC12? It, it, it is very difficult to judge because our influence is mainly talking to administrations. The Agenda point 1.23 was a new allocation. A new allocation always means that some administrations will have a problem. So you will always have to look for compromise. And that's what we do here. We, we talk to people mainly, or almost always outside of the meeting here at the WRC and try to put forward our arguments. And we have some very good supporting administrations. So it has been a, a, a little bit like this, the two first weeks to come up with a compromise. How optimistic do you feel about the future of amateur radio? Very, very. As I said, we had some tough um, challenges when internet was introduced, but we are now uh, actually doing better and better. But of course, youngsters today, they have a variety of electronic things if they want to go into electronics. When I started, th there were not too many alternatives, so amateur radio was the obvious. So. It, it is tougher to fight. We don't get all the youngsters interested, but we are, we are improving. And uh, the combination of um, radio technique and computers, data programs to control it, enhances that. Because young people are interested in that, but they're also interested in communication. And what about future World Radio Communication Conferences for the International Amateur Radio Union? Now it looks like there will be an item for the next one. 
So we will not be able to sit down in the next three years. We will have to attend the study meetings and, and do our job like, almost like a professional here because we need to be respected by the administration and their professional people. And uh, all the amateurs around the world would just sit there and, and wait for us and see if we can come up with new results. But it's also important for us to defend and to justify the frequency bands that we have. So even if we did not get uh, specific amateur allocations on the WRC, we would still be there to make people aware of that we have an allocation here and we have an allocation here and we use it for this and this and this. Because a lot of administrations will not always know all these details.